as we delve into the issues of the day, affordability, cost of living yeah. is a big challenge for young people. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much your audience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the biggest struggle you're finding with youth on the cost of living side yeah. and the affordability side? It's gotten so like detached from reality that people just aren't even trying. Like they're just not even, they're not even like, it's hard to even get them to care about like making, saving 10K for a down payment because they're just like, for what? To buy it, like the, the house is a million dollars anywhere within a 50 kilometer radius or whatever, right? I have to go to, I don't know, Flamborough or like, uh, you know, near Windsor or something to get something that I would want. And so like, I, I find you kind of have to fight through that a little bit and, and say, hey, well, renting isn't the worst thing in the world and you can invest in other markets and you could develop your career and, you know, increase your income and it'll take some time, but eventually you'll settle down. Maybe, maybe instead of your, you know, mid to late 20s, it's in your, you know, early to mid 30s, you actually buy a home for yourself. And that's unfortunate. And there's a lot of reasons for that, political, economical, whatever. But like, that's just what it is. And it's not changing anytime soon. You know, what's interesting is um, I've been doing this longer than an amortization schedule. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you're very good at what you do. Man. And, and, and what's interesting is, you know, when I started in this business in the early 90s, there wasn't the expectation as there is today. Like Buying a home probably happened when people were getting married. Now that's changed a little bit. Yeah, but that I mean, was that's how I think about it. Yeah, like that's the reason why you buy a home. And then when you buy that home, you buy a starter home, mm -hmm. right? And then maybe you have a kid and you look at renovating it and, and maybe looking at putting a deck in and maybe doing the kitchen yeah. and maybe one day finishing the basement yeah. and maybe get an in-law suite or, or maybe a, a basement apartment. And today, you know, Instagram, social media, whatever it is, has has made everybody impatient yeah right like yeah. today people come buying a house and they want the uh chef's kitchen yeah they want a finished basement yeah. they want the outdoor entertainment area counters, with the pool it's got to be granite right and i gotta have and, cedar yeah. deck yeah right and yeah. i gotta have the great landscaping <laughs> yeah. because it's got to all look good and everything is, they want it now yeah and i think that's the challenge i think People need to set goals, and and it, when 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 I heard you talking about that, I almost feel like people have lost hope. No, they. I I think they have, and I, it makes me sad because I do think that like it's it's not a matter of like you can't do it. It's just going to take longer. You can do it. Like I'll give you an example. You know, we we got three boys. Uh, I started the RESP when they were born, and I was thinking like shit. You know, this is two grand three yeah. grand like how's yeah. this ever going to help i was always worried about the cost of of education but you know over 18 years 20 years this thing grew and i can imagine I, it, taking them out of private school and going to university was a discount for me because oh. i don't have to spend any money anymore yeah, exactly. and yeah. now they haven't even used it up yeah oh yeah so, it's a problem you it's have a, all this leftover money right? so yeah. it's like holy shit why can't people think about it in like set goals over time like, yeah you know, the, the home savings account is a 15 year plan. You start at 18, maybe you buy at 33, you could save some money. Yeah. Right. But yeah. it seems like social media, as you said, everybody want wants it now. it now. You want it now. And yeah. and how do you break through to that that audience to, to give them that hope? Because I do see the look of despair. Yeah. Like I, I always use this term. I think people are angry, sad, and mad. Yeah. But that's all I see. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Trudeau's talking about eight out of 10 people get a, a carbon rebate and they're further ahead. Well, eight yeah. out of 10 people that come in my office are angry, sad, and mad. <laughs> yeah, there's <laughs> and, a disconnect. And the, and the rebate does shit for them. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. How, do we, how do we help these folks get through it, push through? Yeah. Because you're doing your part. Yeah, yeah. What else could you think can happen out there that, that could give these kids and youth you you know, a fighting you, chance? You got to reframe everything. You got to reframe everything. That's what I try to do. Like, like, why do you want a home? Like, let's start with that. Like, why do you want a home? Is it because your parents wanted a home? Is it because you think it's a good investment? Well, I could show you a lot of numbers that say it's not for a lot of reasons. If, it, if you're not cash flowing it and it's out of your means and you're going to be totally house poor and or cash poor and you're totally liquid and, oh God, variable rates. What are those? Well, I had two. Now it's eight. Now I'm paying, I was paying 1,500. Now I'm paying 4,500, 5,000. I think a lot of people weren't educated on how that works. No, they weren't. And I'll tell you what, there's a lot of rentals up because people can't afford their mortgage anymore. And well, so, you, and, and that's from people who didn't ask why they wanted the home. 
And so that's that's you know I, I get upset because uh, you know people come in all the time and their their mortgage coming up for renewal and it's a rental property and they're on a variable and I'm mm. thinking holy shit like why are you in a variable they had no idea you have no idea fixed rental you have, you have fixed rental income yeah. that really can only go up by max two and a half percent during COVID it went up zero yeah and you should have a fixed mortgage payment mm. like you got to match your biggest expense with your revenue mm. and. Everybody just got greedy yeah. and they got bad advice and you know and free you, money like it's just money was coming out of who how and we like, could blame like, it we could blame the yeah. government bank of canada yeah, all you yeah. want but at the end of the day it's up to people to make sure they're well versed yeah. and understand the risks yeah and when i started in this business in the early 90s in the mortgage business yeah i started going out with a bailiff collecting homes <laughs> Like yeah. that's how I started. Yeah. It wasn't a lot yeah. of lending. Like it was a shit show. Yeah. And I saw the ugly side of it and everybody just discounted that. No, it'll never happen again. Well, here we are. Well, I mean, even 08, right? Like people thought that was like a, a fever dream. Yeah. Never to happen again, right? And and rates will be zero forever. And, you know, the Fed's going to do this and or the bank of Canada, rates are always going to be low, lower forever. And I think, again, that's why I come back. Like, why do you want a home? You really want, like, look at the people that are losing their shirt right now because they didn't ask that question to themselves. And so if you reframe that and say, hey, maybe I should focus on my career. Maybe I should, you know, try to get to six figures and, and try to elevate myself. Or maybe I should start that business, put everything into that and have some disposable income. And, and rent, rent's expensive, I know, but it's it, at least in some areas it can be manageable and you can save portions of your income. And then you'll get there to where, you, you know, because housing for a lot of people it's a consumption good. It's a consumption yes. good. It's not an investment. You're, 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 it's more of a savings plan than it is an actual investment. Like it's great because I feel like my parents' generation, you know, like, like they didn't know any better. And so thank God that they had a mortgage that they were paying down and they have equity in their home because they wouldn't have a dime otherwise, right? And so, but I, that's not, that's like the base case. I think in the most, you know, you know, high agency sort of situation, saving, putting your money in the market and being patient over time, like you'll have the disposable income and the savings to eventually put down a down payment, I, I think, because but, you'll, but, you'll outpace it. And I think what's what can be very useful is to start thinking outside the box a little bit, right? So if you're a young couple and you've lived in the basement apartment, you lived in a 500 square foot condo, mm. whatever the case is, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that as a renter. No. But if you want to buy a home, maybe you find something that has the ability of a basement unit. Yeah. And you live in that basement unit to start off with and rent yeah, up the rent main unit, right? And yeah, all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. guess what? You got some additional income to help you get to where you need to be. Yeah. And it may not look like it did in 2020 and 2021 yeah. when everything was going through the roof and interest rates are at one and a half. Yeah. But it, it can get you to where you want to be if you yeah. start thinking back how it should work. Yeah get in as a starter home, mm -hmm. work within your means, maybe find a place outside in the burbs yeah. or renting's not a bad thing either. If you're, if you're building your net worth in other areas and asset yeah. classes, that's totally fine. I, I think real estate as an asset class is a fantastic, wonderful asset class, right? But there's other ones. And I am a big fan of the stock market. I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, building your business and building, you know, embedding on yourself and things like that. But I a hundred percent agree. I think a good house hack, if you can get in and rent out the bottom That's unit the or whatever, house hack, house hack yeah, <laughs> wonderful thing. It's just, it's hard for me to make a video about ha house hacking and off floor and whatever the hell, yeah. because it's like, dude, like it's not I need a hundred G's to do a house hack. But I should show you that some of the repurposed projects we got going on, turning oh, yeah? a single family into four units. I think that could, that, 100%. Could, that could provide you some content. Like a multi, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and people could see it and touch it and feel it, right? Yeah. And see what's possible. And and it may be a long-term goal, Yeah, but it is possible with the new bylaws and the new density 100%. Uh, um, bylaw changes. So I think people just got to think of the whole concept a little bit differently because of the affordability issue. Yeah. 